Welcome back to my series, Lovers and Friends Fighting for Your Marriage. So in this video, I'll be sharing a quick testimony and teaching, then giving you a call to action, then finishing up with revealing our prayer declaration over our marriages for today. And that is what you can speak over your marriage every day this week. So let's get started. What is the greatest expression of love? Jesus said in John 15, 12 through 13, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. So a couple mornings ago, I was up at 3.45 a.m. because of my baby, but she went right back to sleep. I kind of just felt the Lord calling me to come down and pray. And he began to bring to memory um, this song that he had given me a couple weeks ago. He wrote it through me and it was after a really hard day that I had had with my baby Addie. This is when she was just a few months old and when the babies are really little, they can pretty much sleep anywhere, at least my baby. She, when we're in the house, she would only sleep for like 30 minutes. But if I ever took her out in the car, like out to a coffee shop or whatever, she would sleep for like three hours. So I was like, okay, I need to like get out of the house. I'm bringing my laptop. I'm going to get some things done, get my life organized. I've been in baby land for a couple months. Like I just need to refocus. So we were going to walk down the street to a coffee shop. It's just a mile away. So I'm like, for sure, my baby will be past out by the time we get there and then I'll have a solid like couple hours to just chill get some things done well my little baby screamed the whole way down and she never screams when I put her in a stroller she screamed and cried I tried putting her in the baby carrier I tried like holding her while pushing the stroller anything she would not stop screaming and I kept going because I was so determined that she would fall asleep well I was almost there and I was like I just give up she's still screaming so I turned back around and at that point I'm crying real tears thank god that I had um sunglasses on and I just start praying to Jesus. I'm like, Jesus, please help me. Please give me your presence. Like help me process this. I just feel like my whole life as I knew it before is gone. Like everything that I work so hard for my career, um, being a worship leader, like music, like all these things I've worked so hard for, I feel like I've totally given them up and I don't have anything anymore. Like I can't even go get a couple hours to myself anymore. I just felt his presence come upon me and I'm like, Lord, I love you. I will worship you in this. Jesus, you are good to me. You are faithful. And I started thanking him. Thank you for my baby, Lord. Thank you for my life. And in the midst of turning and looking towards Jesus and worshiping him, my mind went to heavenly places and I began remembering my life here is so short. I will be in eternity with Jesus forever. And if I lose everything, career, whatever I could gain in this world, if I lose it all, I'll still have Jesus. And those are the lyrics of the song. It says, um, if I lost it all, I would still have you. I choose your presence. I choose your presence. This I will pursue. And so back to my 3.45 a.m. morning with Jesus, he began ministering to my spirit that it's not material things that I've lost but there has been a death and it's myself that's began to die it's my flesh that's began to die and this is what I've called you to and I'm revealing it through wifehood motherhood and he gave me permission then and there to mourn dying to myself like just cry and mourn dying to yourself because this is a real death. He continued to minister to my heart and he revealed to me the picture of Jesus when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was crying, literally tears of blood. The Bible says he was grieved in his spirit and he was crying out to God to take this cup from him because he knew the pain of that death. I was just like, whoa, 
I didn't even realize the way that Jesus grieved his death in prayer in the presence of God. He went away to pray in quiet alone with the Lord and grieved his death before it happened because he knew how hard it would be to sacrifice his life. And I feel like when I entered into marriage, no one explained to me the death I would face of self and how painful it could be to sacrifice my life in marriage. But it's such a beautiful and noble expression of love to give up your life for the benefit of someone else. Jesus says in Luke 9.23, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So deny your own rights. Take up your cross. The cross is where people went to die and follow me. He also says it in Matthew. Matthew 16.24 and 25. Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So can I get really deep on you for a second? I know I've already been getting deep because talking about grieving my own death, that might sound a little bit crazy to some people. It even sounds a little crazy to me because honestly, I've never had this revelation before. Marriage is training so that you're ready to go in the fire. If you were asked to stand up for your faith today, knowing that you would be martyred, you would be killed after declaring your faith. Would you have the strength today to do that? Peter said that he would, that he would die with Jesus. And Jesus said, no, you will deny me three times when the rooster crows. And Peter denied Jesus three times. But then Peter's life, he went through training. He became refined. He went through the fire. And at the end of his life, he was crucified because of his faith. So when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, like I was talking about earlier, there was actually an angel that came and strengthened him as he was grieving his death. And I believe that as we are learning about dying to self, the Lord is going to send strength and strengthen us so that when it's time for a really intense persecution, we will be ready. And marriage is a part of that strengthening process. Let's look at Ephesians 5 verse 1 through 2. It says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us in offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Also in Romans 12 1, it talks about a similar thing but in regards to our lives. So it says, Therefore I urge you by the mercies of of God to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Just like when Jesus laid his life down, it's a pleasing aroma to the Lord when we lay our lives down to love others. And laying your life down before the Lord, it looks like full, total heart obedience to the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's look at a popular marriage scripture. It's Ephesians chapter 5. We'll start at verse 21. And be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church. He himself being the savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. I see both people being called to die to themselves. So the wife is to be subject to the husband as the leader of the household. 
So that's a call to die to yourself. And then the husband is literally called to give himself up for the wife, just as Christ gave himself up and he literally died for us. This, what God has set up is good and it's intended for your good, not for your harm. So maybe you're saying today, well, my husband doesn't lay his life down for me like Jesus. He does not love me like Jesus loves me. Let me just tell you something. No husband is at that level yet. Now, marriage, like I said, it's a training ground. It's a sanctification process. So some husbands may be further along in their sanctification and becoming holy than other husbands, but no husband has fully arrived at the level of Jesus yet. It's a lifetime process and transformation that we go through. But honoring your husband and his leadership and God-given authority is not dependent upon how much your husband is like Jesus. And that's where faith comes into play because you're believing that God's word is good. You're believing that if you obey him, his presence will be with you. He will help you and he will strengthen you through. See, Jesus's death was not dependent on if we were worthy for him to die for us because we weren't. He died for us while we were yet sinners. So we can walk in death to self even if our husbands are not yet perfect like Jesus. And that's where this also becomes a sacrifice. So it takes faith and then it's also a sacrifice, a laying down of our life that's a pleasing aroma to the Lord and his angels will come and strengthen us as we walk this out daily, picking up our cross, denying ourselves. So if your husband is not yet fully like Jesus, which none of them are, then just know that you are in the fire. This is the refiner fire as you obey God. Now, this is only if you're obeying God, if you're living righteously before him, if you're struggling and complaining and trying to get out of this and not submitting to God's way, then you won't be refined. But if you are obeying the Holy Spirit and the word of God living righteously, you are being refined in the fire of God and you are being prepared and made ready to stand for your faith in the day of testing when persecution comes and Jesus promised that it would come. So we have to keep our minds heavenward. We have to keep our minds heavenward. Jesus is the lover of our soul and he's the one we'll be with in eternity forever. Marriage is for here on this earth, but there will be a greater marriage that will take place when Jesus and his bride come together forever in eternity, dwelling together in heavenly places forever. So we praise God for that, that he is preparing us and getting us ready for that day. Okay, let's look at Philippians chapter two, starting at verse five. It says, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Wow, talk about humility. I'll just let you meditate on this scripture on your own time. But notice how it says, have this attitude at the beginning. So take upon this attitude that Jesus had. He was not trying to be equal with God, even though he was God himself. Take upon this attitude of how he laid down his life. So a little encouragement for wives to leave you with is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. It says, In the same way you wives be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives, as they observe your chaste and respectful behavior. Your obedience to the Holy Spirit can actually turn your husband towards Jesus. 
and not only your husband, but it turns others who are watching and the world towards Jesus. I just believe in the same way Jesus gave me permission to grieve my dying to self, that he wants to give you permission to take time and grieve this death so that you can walk it out in joy and with purpose knowing what you're doing. So I would just suggest I love soaking music. I love Julie True soaking music. Just putting some of that on, setting aside some time to just sit quietly before God and just allow Him to minister to your heart about this dying to self. Maybe you want to read the scriptures of Jesus when He was in the Garden of Gethsemane grieving His coming death and just sitting with the presence of God and allowing Him to take you through this grieving process. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted and I just want to encourage you that when you do this you will be comforted and you will be able to get through this with the strength of the Lord and if you don't know Jesus and you are desiring to give your life to him and know him and follow him then all you have to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and and he is alive and you will be saved and then go get baptized experience the dying to yourself by going down in the water and then being raised to life again with the power of Jesus it is time for this week's prayer decree and this is where you get to take action in fighting for your marriage so I have composed a prayer and and I used mostly the scriptures that we've talked about in this video today to write this prayer in my own words, but it is based upon scriptures that we have discussed. And so I'm going to read this prayer to you and you can use it every day this week to speak it over your marriage and watch the power of God at work. If you want to know more about why it is powerful and important to pray the scriptures and speak the word of God, you can watch my previous video. It's called Faith, Dreams, and Prayer Promises. So here's today's prayer decree, and I'm going to be reading it from my screen. So, I speak the greatest love over my marriage, love that lays its life down for its friend. Jesus, I pray you would send strengthening help to my husband like you received in the Garden of Gethsemane as he steps into his high calling as a husband who gives himself up for his bride, just as Jesus did for the church. Jesus, send me that same strengthening power as I grieve dying to myself and begin walking in the beauty of honoring my husband's God-given leadership in our marriage. Amen. Ask me a question. After every video, I want to give an opportunity for you to ask me any question that you have on this video or anything in general. You can ask it in the comments below or if you're a more private person, you can ask me on my Instagram. You can private message me there. So so thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I post weekly videos. Would love for you to continue along on this journey with me. Like the video, share it with those who you think would benefit.